two for trucking success. Back in the step one video I did, I'm going to start a little playlist so y'all can go back and check out these types of videos. Back in step one, I discussed the importance of finding the proper starter company, the proper training program, keeping your driver's license clean, and remaining extremely safety conscious. Don't get no speeding tickets at all because all of that will mean a ton as you grow through the business, as you get the quality jobs, as you just go out on your own. Now, step two for trucking success, you're moving past your original starter company. You know, the Swift and the Snyders and all that kind of stuff. Whoever you start with, you're moving, you're moving past that original company. Once you have that little bit of experience, a year, two years, you got to get out there on the job market and you need to search for a quality company. Whether that be a smaller mom and pop operation or a larger, more lucrative company to work for, you need to get out there and really shop. Because look, you've got the experience now. You are a high commodity. There are companies that will pay you really well to come and drive for them. And they will train you to learn new skills. The flatbed companies, the oversized companies, the step deck companies, tanker companies, hazardous materials. There are a lot of niches that you can get into out here in trucking and make really good money. So when you're moving into this step two area, after you have that experience in your belt you know you basically have two options in my opinion you find a more lucrative company to work for a company maybe like UPS maybe FedEx any of those type of companies or you can go and you can start a lease purchase program now some people do not want the responsibility some people do not want the headache that it takes to do lease purchase and owning your own truck it's not for everybody it's not easy and i would be lying to you if i said it was now i did work for a lot of different companies i found one or two that were very lucrative but those companies put me in some peculiar situations one in particular I was delivering feed and uh, you deliver it you run it off an of auger boom into this big old tank well the guy that had delivered it before me had knocked the handrail loose on the ladder to go up whenever I had set up and I went over there to open the bin you know there's a string that hangs down you pull it to open the bin the ladder railing fell and almost killed me I mean it stuck in the ground exactly where I was standing so if I would have been a little bit hesitant or if I wouldn't have moved so quick I wouldn't be here today to make this video and that's just something that happened on the farm there were situations that I was put in on the road and stuff like that that I would rather not talk about but you have to be careful who you hire on with and the things that they do in their business practices you need to make sure that you're going to come out on the other side more experienced and better paid but most of all you want to come out alive because these trucks ain't no joke you know you see more and more people coming out here in the industry they have automatic trucks they're driving them like they're driving a Prius. I mean, they're just along for the party. They got their flip-flops on. They got their shorts on. They're just chicked back and chilled. I got work boots and pants on just about every day I live. Because I work. I unload these trucks. And 
you know, I try to put a hustle in. I try to look the part. I don't want to look trashy. I don't want to look slobby. I want people to look at me and know that, hey, he's a truck driver and he's a worker and he's trying to do it the right way. Not everybody has that same philosophy. Nobody, no two people are going to do it the same out here on the big road. And y'all will learn that as you as you grow into the business. Now, like I said, there's a lot of different companies and you can be very well paid. If I had it to do over again, I would go straight from my training company into a lease purchase because that's what I've always been interested in. I've always wanted to build a company that will last through the ages. I wanted to build something that would be worth talking about. Something that I don't have to get up and work for somebody else. When I go to work, I know I'm doing it for myself and my family. You know, so I would go personally straight into a lease purchase so that I can learn the business. Because the way you gotta look at it is you're being paid to get a business education of sorts. The things I have learned through the last 20 years are a lot. <laughs> That's all, I'm, just a lot. I have forgot a lot also. But over the last three years since I've been owner operating, I have learned even more. There are aspects of the business as an owner operator that you do not learn or will not ever learn coming through a trucking school or a starter company because they don't want to teach you everything. They want to keep you a driver. They want to keep you a low level, low skilled truck operator. They don't want you to have the ambition to go out and get your own truck unless they have a lease purchase program and in that case, they're you a lot of times, I don't want to stereotype too bad, they're set up for the driver to fail and for the company to make a lot of money. That is the nature of companies. Companies are out here to make money. They're not out here to hold your hand. You need to go in with your eyes wide open. Expect the loopholes in the contracts and the lease agreements. Expect the company to try to get over it on you. That's the way things are set up. They are set up so that the company makes as much money as possible. So yeah, I don't blame the companies so much whenever they write the contracts to favor themselves because it's only to be expected. We all need to be prepared and ready and expect those types of things. Now, in my experience, when I went into the lease purchase, there's a company here in Mississippi that I tried first. It was KLLM. Now, when I went to this company, I was already preparing to go to Schneider. But I had a big span of time that I had to cover before Schneider was the, my truck was available. So, what I did is I went to this company, it's KLLM, and they had dispatchers. So we signed, it's a walk away lease, and they gave a sign on bonus the whole nine yards. So I went to their little orientation and got in a truck. It was a nice truck, 2015. It was actually a little bit newer than the one that I drive now. And, uh, you know, I, I liked that truck a lot. And I took a couple of loads for them that week when we finally got our trucks. I did not enjoy the dispatching. Being dispatched when you're paying all the bills is not a good thing in my opinion. So if you decide to do a lease purchase or lease on with the company, do yourself a favor. Make sure it is one where you get to choose your own loads, choose your own freight, because that will make a world of difference at your bottom line. Because when you're paying somebody that you barely know to dispatch you, you are, you are going uphill. It's going to be a battle. I mean, 
these people at that company we tried to i tried to call them i tried to talk to them and you just couldn't you could not get them on the phone they would not talk to you so finally i was over i think in it was north georgia i believe and i had to told them i needed to go back to the house so i could load up my truck with my stuff well these folks didn't want me to they were going to send me up to ohio instead of sending me by the house and i had done had enough i had done had enough of them and i basically i just drove back to mississippi with an empty trailer plus it was a reefer trailer freight and reefer trailers <laughs> are definitely not my thing not only do you have that racket maker behind your bunk you've got extended wait periods everywhere you go seems like I mean if you're not waiting at the shipper you're waiting at the receiver it's always somebody holding you up and then you have all those gall darn lumper fees seemed like everywhere you went you had to get some kind of lumper check to pay people to unload their own freight that makes totally no sense to me so the KLLM thing I guess you could say was a failure but I uh, was able to go straight on over there to Snyder pretty quick afterwards but the good thing is with the KLLM thing they paid you for orientation they gave you your bonus half up front after you took your first load and after everything was said and done with I come out pretty good on the deal I was I was I needed that money so uh the day came where I got to go to Charlotte to sign up to get the truck that I drive now every day man I was excited I got a rental car first time I had a rental car <laughs> it was cool it was a nice little car got it at the airport in Jackson turned it in at the airport in Charlotte got over there and they wanted you to share a room with somebody now y'all I'm not a peopley person I don't like sleeping in the same room with strangers so I recommend if you're able to have a little money so you can buy a, buy your own room so you don't have to sleep side by side in a company room that's just not my thing but I was not in a financial situation that I could afford my own room so that's right I had to share a room with another driver and it was awful I had all my stuff with me computer and everything because I didn't know no better I thought for sure you had to have your computer to work a load board, but luckily I was able to use it on my phone 90% of the time. But moving to that lease purchase program, y'all, I had $20 in my pocket. I was just trying to get in there to where I could get my first advance and then my first check to hold my head above water. I mean, my financial situation was very dire and there's a lot more to the story but i'm only doing 15 minute videos so i'm gonna have to cut this one on off right there but yeah i think step two for me would definitely be doing a lease purchase walk away lease if possible just to cover your butt god bless catch you next ride